Hey guys, Moidog here, and today we'll be going over the next update to Foxhole, update 48. Announced in a dev chat stream last week, this is a quote unquote minor update, but just like the last minor update, this one actually has quite a lot of content, balance changes, and quality of life tweaks that will change the game quite a bit, including some weapons of Foxhole Wars past, as well as some brand new additions that's taken everybody by surprise. I've taken some time to play around with all the new stuff in the dev branch and read through the patch notes, so if you did miss a stream, don't worry, we'll be going over everything you need to know and showing off all the good stuff in this video. But before we get into that, I do want to remind everyone that I stream a lot of Foxhole on Twitch at twitch.tv slash moidog. If you're new to the game or a vet, Kali, Warden, doesn't matter, come hang out and talk about the current war, ask questions, and just chill with the community. The live streams are a lot of fun, so I hope to see you there. So, the last update to the game was update 47 in December of 2021, which introduced the new tripod weapons, armored cars, prototype vehicles, and plenty of other changes. Since then, we've had two wars to iron out the kinks and get used to this new meta, and update 48 aims to balance out some of the new content that was introduced recently as well as add quite a few new quality of life changes to help players in their day-to-day -day tasks. Let's first start off with the balance changes. War 87 saw an unprecedented level of storm cannons and although the devs have stated that they like the storm cannon itself, they have admitted it needs some more tweaking. The last update saw a huge damage reduction in storm cannons, and in 48, we're seeing another big nerf with firing and direction adjustments using double the power as before, meaning that to fire a storm cannon, it will actually now take 2% power per shot, and azimuth adjustments will take 3.6% power per one degree of azimuth. The prior nerf simply just doubled the amount of storm cannons, so I would really assume the players would do something just like that in this one. Tripod weapons have also been reworked completely, as the tripods themselves were causing weird issues with players who use them. Tripods will no longer completely protect players using them, and the cover buff you used to receive previously is now gone, making the users a lot more vulnerable to enemy fire, and these weapons and tripods can now also be destroyed by ballistic damage. For those of y'all who were also sick of hearing the MG sounds non-stop, the Lamentum and Ratcatcher have also had their ammo capacity reduced, and although I am happy to see the Lamentum down from 250 rounds to 200 rounds, the Ratcatcher, which shoots quicker and is still less accurate than the Lamentum, has been reduced from 170 rounds to 150. Once again, another odd asymmetrical bounce tweak for weapons that should, for the most part, be relatively equal. I still think the Lamentum is far better than the Ratcatcher, but Either way, it's nice to see some reduction in ammo, so we just reduce the amount of noise spam on the battlefield. Additionally, a huge change that will affect both sides dramatically is that all tripod weapons now cost armats. One of the main pain points to all of these weapons were that they were incredibly spammable since they only cost B-mats and made infantry fighting for both sides a huge pain. But now that they all require a small logi cost sink in order to be made, we should see players use them a little bit more sparingly. Now, although this isn't tripod weapon specific, this next change will have pretty substantial ramifications for tripod gameplay as well. And that would be that 30 millimeter and RPG ammo costs have been changed dramatically. In the current dev branch, RPG shell costs have been reduced from 75 EMATs to 35 EMATs per crate, while 30 millimeter shell crate costs have been increased from 20 EMATs to 40. This is a huge swing, and as much as Wardens have complained about the ISG, I think this is ultimately way too big of a nerf. The benefit of 30 mil is that it's cheap, and it does decent damage and DPS. But by costing more than RPGs, the appeal of 30 mils and the ISG has now been completely removed. Realistically speaking, 30 mil cost in the past was way too cheap, costing 8 times less than RPGs while still doing about the same amount of damage. And although this gap did need to be looked at, I think reducing RPG cost below 30 mil was completely the wrong move. In this graph here, you can see that the damage to salvage value seems to follow a pretty standard increase as you get to more powerful weaponry, meaning that you need to spend more resources in order to make a bigger boom, which makes sense. But if you see, RPGs are actually now inversed. I posted this on the feedback channels on the official Foxhole Discord, but I truly believe that RPG should be sitting somewhere in the 60 EMAT cost instead of 35, so 30 millimeter is still useful. Otherwise, they'll be completely overshadowed in combat. And since Colonials rely heavily on 30 mil for early and early mid game options, it would be way too big of a nerf to their faction as a whole if this currently went live. 
I know 30 mil and ISGs are a pretty big conversation point in the community, so I am curious on y'all's thoughts on the current change in update 48 and my proposed RPG cost increase to better balance the weapon types. So do let me know in the comments down below. Remember, the dev branch and these update notes are not final, so all feedback given to the devs will be helpful. Another big balance change has been implemented for anti-tank weapons and launchers, with Ignifis, Flasks, Venoms, and RPGs all receiving tweaks. For the Colonials, Ignifis have had their damage reduced, but Venoms have also had their movement speed improved and weight decreased. So although Ignifis may not be as powerful as before, Venoms should see a lot more use. One theme that I've noticed in these balance changes is that the devs seem to want to balance out a little bit of these arsenals so that way if one weapon has been overshadowing all the others, moving forward that shouldn't be the case. So whereas Ignifis were commonly used for everything including anti-infantry and anti-vehicle, Venoms were pretty much skipped until the Colonials got Banes. With these changes, I would expect to see Venoms used a lot more on the battlefield despite still being a worse Bane and a slightly more cumbersome Ignifist. For the Wardens, Flasks have been greatly improved, with both the damage and throw speed increased. Although White Ash have always been pretty effective if you were able to land a hit, the incredibly slow throw speed in the past made for incredibly frustrating gameplay. So it's good to see the speed here improve and the Flask no longer seemingly float in the air the moment it leaves your hand. Other weapons have had various tweaks and balance passes too, so if you'd like to see every single detail, I'd recommend reading the long list of patch notes for the small arms, but the most notable ones are the Booker Storm Rifle and the Dusk. If you've never used the Booker, it's probably no surprise why. With 12 rounds and a burst fire only mode, kind of like the Kali Fashina, which also actually received one additional burst round, so having 18 rounds instead of 15, it was a pretty bad weapon when compared to everything else, and the Booker was often classed in the meme category. In Update 48, the Booker has had its ammo increase to 42 as well as having its stability improved, making it a far better option for players. I do think 42 rounds seems a little bit excessive since it has a concentrated burst fire that can actually one-tap players, and maybe something like 36 rounds would be a little bit better, but for the first time I'm actually excited to use this weapon in actual fighting. While the Booker was buffed, the Dusk was nerfed slightly. Although it has had a few stability and suppression improvements, the weapon itself now makes players move much slower than before, making the run and gun laser playstyle much less effective. I still think this is going to be a huge part of late game Kali infantry gameplay, but it should make players slightly more vulnerable than before, which will allow good infantry players to take advantage of flanks and ambushes when combating dusks. And lastly, both snipers have been indirectly buffed by the removal of sniper ammo. Yes, 8.5mm ammo has been completely removed from the game, and both the Clancy Rocket M4 and Augur will now use 7.62. By unifying the ammo, this will greatly improve logistics for these weapons, and you should see them used a lot more frequently on the battlefield. Damage has been adjusted on both weapons to compensate for the new ammo type, so they will still actually do the same amount of damage as usual, even though they're using the 7.62 rounds. With gameplay balance changes, there have also been quite a few economy changes as well, which, if you're a Logi main, should be really welcome to see. Although it would take ages to go through each and every one of these, as a whole, crate assembly times have been reduced across the board, so pulling from public should now be a lot less painful. Additionally, individual pull times have also been adjusted, so individuals pulling equipment from bunker bases, town halls, and relics should spend a lot less time putting together a kit and jumping back into the fight. On top of this, the assembly animation can finally be cancelled. Yes, you are no longer stuck assembling an item you accidentally clicked on if you didn't want it. And if you do wish to cancel, you can simply move your character and it will stop the process. This is a huge quality of life change that the devs themselves mentioned should have been added a while ago, but do note, however, that this does not work if you are in a vehicle. Factories have also been reworked quite a bit too, and we now have a heavy ammunition category for 120, 150 and 300 millimeter artillery, 250 millimeter mortar rounds, 68 and 40 millimeter rounds, and warheads, allowing infantry and vehicle munitions to be made separately and opening up queues. Additionally, you now have six factory queues instead of four. Order times have been increased from 45 minutes to 60 minutes before they get released to public, and your max held order per queues have increased from 8 to 20. 
To top it all off, factories now have appropriate factory order tool tips when mousing over them on the map so you can see exactly what queues are running and refineries have had their storage tweaked a little bit so that they can fit into 6k shipping containers. Oh, and Laji players should also appreciate that cranes can now rotate whatever it's shipping using A and D so you no longer have to weirdly position your crane in order to place containers certain ways. Overall, these are some really nice Logi quality of life changes that I know the Logi union will be very much appreciated. It's not quite everything they asked for during their strike, but as the devs said themselves, this is a minor update. And for a minor update, these are some great additions. All right, so we've had balance tweaks, economy changes, and new quality of life additions, but what about new content? Well, to everyone's surprise, there are actually a lot of new things coming to update 48. We're gonna start it off with the return of grenade launchers. The KLG 901-2 Lunar F, which has been referred to as the Thumper due to its resemblance to the American M79 grenade launcher first introduced back in Vietnam, has been added for the Colonials, while the Wardens will be receiving the Osprey Rifle Grenade Attachment. Both of these can fire the new Tremola HE grenade, which does slightly less damage than a Mammon, and Green Ash. However, the Wardens can also fire their Harpa Fragmentation Grenades from it, while the Colonials can also fire Smoke Grenades. Yes, smoke is back, and we'll we'll get to that. First, the launchers. My first impression of the grenade launchers are that they're pretty well balanced, but it does feel like the Colonial one lacks a bit of something. Maybe it's range? I'm not quite sure, but it feels like a dedicated grenade launcher should fire slightly further and be better than a rifle attachment, but it really doesn't seem that way. Both appear to fire just under 30 meters. However, since Wardens attach the grenade launcher to the rifles, which are longer than the launcher, they actually get a slightly longer range than the dedicated grenade launcher itself. I'm not sure if this is intended, but I really don't think it should be that way. Additionally, the Tremola grenades feel weird, not good, but it just doesn't act appropriately, or it doesn't act how you think it should. Mammons explode on impact, and since we're used to having our HE grenades explode immediately, when you fire these Tremola grenades from launchers and you see them tumble around for a bit, it just really seems off, and depending on your aim, you can actually miss your target if you get a bad bounce. Personally, I would really like to see these being direct impact, but either way, they're a nice new range option for PvE damage. Another important distinction between the two is the Colonial Grenade Launchers are primary weapons classified as launchers. So because of this, they actually can't be fired out of things like barges and APCs with the ramp up. I feel like this is really an oversight since the Warden variant doesn't have this restriction since the game sees it as a rifle being shot. Balance wise, it would either be good for the Colonial variant to be able to shoot out of these vehicles or the Warden variant being unable to shoot out of these vehicles. So hopefully this balance does get looked at by the devs. And now let's talk smoke grenades. Smoke is back in the game after being removed for being way too powerful of a PvE tool. In the past, smoke grenades would completely blind AI defenses, allowing for players to essentially spam them around garrisons and satchel. Now, however, smokes do not let you hide from AI, but instead make them shoot a little slower and a little less accurately. And this works if you both cover the garrison with smoke or you block the garrison's line of sight to you. We did a little bit of testing with this, and by swarming defenses with smoke, you're able to get a satchel or two off even with just three people, and that's not even taking consideration suppressing fire. With a machine gun suppressing garrisons and smoke covering the path of travel, it really seems like these satchels will be an extremely powerful tool when linked up with smokes. My main concern is that as of right now, there's really no downside to running through smoke. And since players disappear completely when you're inside of smoke, you can just camp and hide from enemies while in the smoke cloud. Having some sort of visual change for players while they're in the middle of the smoke, like how your vision is reduced at night or in blizzards, might be nice. But still, ultimately, as much as I like playing around with smokes on the dev branch, I just can't help but feel like this is something that really shouldn't be in the game. I personally, I just think it's going to be spammed way too much. I think it's going to make infantry fighting chaotic and unfun, and you're not going to have any type of visibility. And then this will eventually snowball into late games so that defenses are essentially deleted during low pop hours. Or an extremely quick partisan attack will be able to level an entire area before QRF can respond. I would love to be proven wrong on this, but I really think some things might be better off not being included in the game. And as much as it pains me to say this, I think smoke is one of those things. Let me know your thoughts on smoke down below, since personally I didn't play when smoke was as overpowered, but like I said, playing in the dev ranch right now, it just really doesn't look like it's going to be good for the game as a whole. 
There is also a new squad voice system, which allows players to join up to three different squads in game. Not only will you be able to bounce around the voice channels, but you can also use these squads for things like factory or refinery queues, assigning storm cannons, or even claiming rocket sites. This will be great for regimental organization, but to be honest, the first thing I did was create a squad that was just for me titled Quiet Time, so I could swap over to it to take a break from squad chat without disabling voice. The last big changes we're getting in Update 48 are the inclusion of new uniforms, and these are definitely things I would have not expected to see. First off, our new armor uniforms, the Colonial Velian Flak Vest and the Warden Gunner's Breastplate. Both of these uniforms are intended to give players more protection on the battlefield in exchange for speed. The Colonial Flak Vest resembles real-world Flak Vests and is designed to reduce damage from shrapnel and bullets as well as reducing the chance of receiving bleeds. This seems like something that would be good for players on mortars, in place weapons, or the 120mm field artillery pieces. Basically anything that's stationary where you may be vulnerable to explosives and receiving bleeds. For the Wardens, the Gunner's Breastplate looks pretty medieval, but it probably draws inspiration from World War I trench armor. The Breastplate actually reduces the damage done by small arms, melee, and bayonets. And while wearing it, bayonet charges are no longer one-shot kills. In fact, you'll need to stab someone three times in order to kill them if they were wearing this armor. It's a really unique uniform choice, and I can maybe see this being used defensively when holding safe houses or forward trench lines, areas that are frequently overrun with bayonet charges, or even having pushgun crew members throw them on to protect themselves from melee rushes. Additionally, we're also getting our first non-combat related uniform, the officer's uniforms. These uniforms are pretty much cosmetic in nature and are restricted to players who are officers in their own regiment. There was some confusion earlier on the dev branch by players who have actually reached second lieutenant rank and above, but once again, just to clarify, game ranks and levels do not matter at all. You need to be classified as an officer in your in-game regiment in order to use this uniform. In addition to it looking cool while wearing this uniform, players will actually not receive any punishment while shooting or killing players within their own regiment. And the patch notes explicitly specify that you can discipline subordinates without reparations. I think this is awesome, and it's something we need a little bit more in Foxhole since it's not too outlandish to make the game feel too roleplay-y, but it's just fun enough to allow those who are in regiments to not only have officers look the part, but also get into some clan shenanigans. The last big change is the new server restart recovery mode which will prevent players from immediately spawning in after server restarts and rushing to the enemy's lines to steal equipment or destroy bases without AI. This has been one of my biggest complaints with the game for the past few months, since oftentimes your entire frontline will not be able to log in, and when you finally do, you've actually lost a forward BB to the enemy players who were able to log in and could rush it down, steal equipment, and completely PvE everything you've been working on for the past six hours. The devs also stated that we will have less server restarts as a whole, and the ones that we do have will be broadcast well in advance. So hopefully this, plus the server recovery mode, will help solve the server restart rush once and for all. There are also a few other changes, such as intel centers, storm cannons, and bunker bases can no longer receive friendly fire in hopes to reduce griefing, the amount of unstucks per war has increased from 2 to 8, and barges finally have horns. But that just about wraps up everything releasing in Update 48. Currently, we're in the midst of War 88, and with many people taking it easy after 36 days of War in 87, I would expect this war to wrap up in about another week or so. Although everything in the dev branch and these notes aren't final, the next war will look a lot like what we've gone over today. So if you do want to check out all the new stuff for yourself, hop on the dev branch or just wait for War 89 to try it out for real. But what do you guys think? Are grenade launchers awesome? Is smoke a little too OP? Or maybe you're hyped about the new uniforms. Let me know in the comments below, and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace.